Right. Um, good day, ladies and gents. Um, welcome to Risk Management 1.1. Uh, today we'll be looking at Chapter 3 on Module 1, the types and the modes of hazards. Remember, when we started from Chapter 1, we looked at understanding what hazards are. We looked at the different theories, and we derived our definition. And we looked at what hazards are and what hazards are not. Chapter 1. Chapter 2, we looked at the 11 inherent characteristics of hazards. Very, very important. The key uh, characteristics which we looked at, they are all important, but there's two which are very key that I want us to remember, especially when it comes to the interactions of hazards, both the types as well as the levels as well as the energies, which is by far the most important. It is the energy within that hazard that usually creates a safety risk. Very, very important. Now, today we're going to be looking at the types of hazards. Types of hazards include the following. We've got single hazards, we've got compound hazards, as well as multiple hazards. Let's explain each. Single hazards, any object that is a pure element on a periodic table of natural elements, that's a hazard. If we say oxygen is part of the periodic table, oxygen is a hazard. If you say beryllium is on the periodic table, then it is a hazard. If you say oxygen that we breathe, it's part of the periodic table, then it is a hazard. Every element that exists on the periodic table is referred to as a single hazard. Periodic table is an arrangement of elements that have been identified in nature and that is listed in order of their increasing atomic number. Those who have done science will know this. Each element has a very unique atomic number of identification, also called a symbol. Example, Fe stands for iron. All of those elements are tangible objects that show common characteristics of hazards as listed and explained in the earlier chapter. Examples of single hazards include a piece of pure iron. We've seen the symbol for iron, Fe. Lead, pure oxygen, pure nitrogen, and more. All those elements that are on the periodic table. Such hazards interact with any one or more hazards on a basis of its characteristic as a single pure element or object, according to Mr. Crowell. Second type of hazards are compound hazards. Compound hazards comprise a combination or integration of more than one element or hazard. A compound hazard is a substance that is made up of two or more hazards or elements that are chemically joined. Cannot be separated into elements without breaking the chemical bonds and dismantling the combined nature of that particular substance. Examples of compound hazards are the following, metal alloys, manganese, chrome, and so forth, those alloys, water, sulfuric acid, paint, a key, and more. The last type of hazard are multiple hazards. A multiple hazard comprises a combination of any type of single or compound hazard. Such hazards, such hazards interact with other hazards on a basis of combined, compound, or synergistic, or total of the characteristics of single or compound hazards that comprise such multiple hazards. It can be a combination between single ones or compound and singles and so forth. 
Safety professionals need to know and understand the nature and the functioning of any hazard, whether it's single, it's compound, or multiple, that is involved in creating a safety risk level in a given situation. In order to analyze the specific types of hazards and develop control measures to ensure safe interaction between hazards within the man-machine interface. The man-machine interface is usually referred as ergonomics. Examples of multiple hazards include the following, but not limited to a bunch of keys. It's got keys, it's got wires, it's got metal, it's got rings, it's got everything. That's an example of a multiple hazard. A motor vehicle, car, it's got wheels, it's got tires, it's got frames, it's got batteries, it's got so many things in itself. That's a multiple hazard. A palisade fence, falling ground and rocks and more. Very important, hazard versus hazardness. A hazard is any tangible object, either solid, liquid, or gas, that has closing and collision potential with the potential to cause harm to humans or damage to property or the environment. Whereas hazardness, it is the hazardness. The hazardness of a hazard is therefore directly related to the impact of such hazard. So the impact that a particular hazard makes as a result of any interaction is referred to as hazardness. While interacting with other hazards, correct. Right, let's look at another important concept, the modes of hazards. We've got three modes of hazards that we're going to be looking at. A hazard has three modes. The first one is dormant, armed, as well as active. A hazard is dormant when it is in its non-interactive state with human beings. Remember, the types of interaction, non-interactive, that means it does not interact with anything at all. It does not offer any safety risks to humans. A hazard is dormant when it's in its non-interactive state with human beings. The key word there, human beings. It does not offer any safety risks to humans. No humans, no human or environment interaction. Example, a car just parked in a garage, just sitting there. Armed. When there are one or more individuals, now we are interacting, people are coming through. When there are one or more individuals in the vicinity of such a hazard, who can or will be affected as a result of interaction with such hazard? An armed hazard offers or poses a safety risk to humans in its environment. Then it becomes armed because by the mere fact that there is a possible interaction with one or more individuals in the vicinity. Then the hazard becomes armed. Example, the same example, a car in a garage being warmed up. CO levels are going to increase. CO levels dormant whilst inside but no interaction. You've just started your car, you are not there. But once I enter, once a human being enters into the garage, then it becomes armed because now a human or individual comes into that place. Active. The moment it interacts with one or more hazards and such hazards are affected by the active hazard. Hazards may off cause be recipro reciprocally interactive by influencing one another. The effects of such interaction may be advantageous or adverse. It may be advantageous or adverse. When hazards impact on other hazards, including humans, such hazards are active, as we have looked with a, gar a car in a garage, with CO levels, and once a person enters, it becomes active. 
Humans as a hazard can also be dormant, armed, active hazards, either in relation to natural hazards or other humans. Hazards could be of the reactive or interactive type, and the influence could happen at additive, synergistic, as well as at, at antagonistic uh, state. Modes of hazards, this is just an example of what we have explained. It becomes active once a person has entered that garage and they're smelling those high levels of carbon monoxide and it can impact in terms of their health and so forth. Or also, if the car is not serviced, the pollution that that car is going to be giving off is going to impact the environment and so forth. That's at its active state. This is just an example of what we, we have explained. A hazard is dormant when it is in a non active state with a human being armed. A hazard becomes armed when there is one or more humans, individuals in the vicinity of such hazard who can or will be affected as a result of interaction or with such hazard. Such effect may be positive or negative. Active, a hazard becomes active, becomes active the moment it interacts with one or more hazards and such hazards are affected by the active hazards, irrespective of whether the effect is positive or negative. Hazards affected by the interaction may be any tangible object which may include human beings. Those are the modes of hazards. Now also we're going to be looking at the classes of energy. Classes of energy. Classes of energy. Classes of energy, energies can be classified into three classes. The different classes are class A, class B, or class C type of energies. Class A energy represents those energies which has high force and short duration. The impact may differ or vary in terms of severity, but the occurrence happens suddenly and within a short period of time. Example, when a donkey kicks or bites you, it will hurt intensely there and then. When a donkey kicks or bites you, it will hurt intensely there and then. Example, another example, guillotine amputation in the olden days when you were judged to have done something which warranted you to face the guillotine. It's high force, the guillotine, the blade comes with high force, <laughs> short duration, and we lose our heads. Class B type of energy. Class B energy represents those energies of lower force and with rapid or intermittent duration. Class B energy does not keep on for long, strenuous periods. The force of class B energy is less than that of class A energy. Example, a jackhammer that can pound your ears fairly intensely, but it is fairly short duration or even intermittent. It does not continue for a very long time. It doesn't continue at length, but it could eventually result in unwanted irreparable loss as a result of frequent exposure. Class C types of energy. Class C energy is lower force than both previous classes, which is class A and B, but its duration is long and mostly continuous. The force is less intense, but the effects and the impact of long-term exposure is in most cases irreparable. Example, long-term exposure to dust, noise, could result in permanent impairment of certain bodily functions like human respirations, lung problems, asbestosis, silicosis, exposure to those dusts for a very long time. Exposure to noise, we call it noise-induced hearing loss, which can happen. Likewise, alcohol meets the same criteria to class C energy. Drinking Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, 3, 4, 2, 4, 365 it can result into long-term effects, and it can affect your liver functions and other parts as well. 
All right. That's just a so short summary. Class force duration as well as examples that we've spoke about. Class A, strong, high force, duration, very short. Examples, finger hit with a hammer. Force is high, pain, intense, and short. Class B, the force, low. Duration is rapid or intermittent. Jackhammer noise will not hurt your ears intensely and only irritates you for as long as the noise continues. Class C, the force, very low. Duration, long and continuous. If you inhale dust, it has a very low immediate impact, but the long term uh, can cause illnesses or even death after a very long time. I thank you all.